watching Telecom TV from ONS North America 2018 in Los Angeles. And I'm joined now by A.L. Feldstein of Amdox. A.L., thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Nice to meet you. I want to talk about open source and Amdox's um, involvement, uh, because you, you are at the heart of open source in the telco community. We'll come on to projects like ONAP in a moment. Um, but at the event this year, you announced that you're becoming a founding member of the Linux Foundation's Acumos AI project. Correct. What's that project about? What's the scope and, and significance of it? So, Acumos and Linux Foundation Deep Learning Project is a, a developed in open source marketplace for artificial intelligence applications. If, you're, if you own data, which is the new gold, the new petrol, if you made the new asset, you can have, you can use that data and create a predictor. You can uh, uh, create a trained software module that you can sell in a partner in a marketplace. How does machine learning fit in with this? Because machine learning often goes hand in hand with, with AI. So, so how, how does it all work? Machine learning is subdomain of artificial intelligence where you actually use a, a toolkit. There are several toolkits, Scikit, TensorFlow and so forth. You run it through a huge amount of data, which contains piece of data and a prognosis, such as an X-ray and a prognosis saying there's nothing wrong with your body or there's a fracture on the, 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 the second rib or the third rib and so forth. You run it through enough data and eventually with machine learning, you can reach to, to when you train the model, the model can, uh, it's called a predictor now, and given a new x-ray, it will tell you a prognosis on a new x-ray. And it will know exactly what's happened. It will not know about the anatomy of a human. It will, know whether, it will not know whether your bones are made of plastic or wood or, or clay or whatever, but it will, based on millions of pictures, it will know how to make the prognosis. That's machine learning. So how does this translate to the telecoms industry? How, what, what use cases might we see this um, using in, in telecoms? Think about share prediction, for instance. There's customers that are churning uh, uh, from your organization. So you have a training set, just like x-rays, and you actually have customers that churn given certain uh, uh, permutation of, of situation location, geography, where the person lived, uh, how much months he was, uh, uh, sentiment analysis and so forth. You can t take that information, make a predictor uh, out of it, then you apply it to a new customer or, or to somebody that you want to inspect and you know exactly what is the score that is going to uh, uh, churn. And it will even pro uh, uh, provide you with proposals of what to offer to that customer in order so that he won't churn. Now, this isn't your, your first uh, project with the Linux Foundation. Um, you were instrumental in, in bringing at and Ecomp into ONAP. Correct. So, we were the first uh, uh, vendor to create Ecomp together with at and And then Ecomp joined with, with OpenO and we made it uh, ONAP. Even today, after uh, so much time, we are the largest contributor to ONAP after at and in terms of amount of committers, in terms of amount of line of code, in terms of uh, every quantitative measure. And we embrace open source. We think it's a huge opportunity. Now, you've also made an announcement this week about ONAP uh, and, and about the ability to, to run this in a cloud environment. So what happens is that we, what happened was that we saw that customer they have these, some, in some cases, operators, they would say, I'm going to bring on up to my lab, I need to install stuff, I need to allocate so many servers, maybe it's going to be a lot of work, I need to have DevOps engineers, all that. So instead, we are telling those customers, we have a hosted environment, we have on up, and you can log in immediately and start running it on a Microsoft lab. In fact, you can run a use case on lab. That's for the, that's for the learning phase. When it's already running, why don't you use the infrastructure of Microsoft instead of your own? So that's where we are uh, getting. And we see a lot of enthusiasm from uh, operators worldwide. Now, Amdocs has been um, 
working in the telecoms industry for, for a long time, got a lot of experience there. You, you see a lot of uh, movement in the telecoms industry. Are we at a stage now where telcos really embrace open source and open networking, or is it still a little bit of a distraction for them? So, embrace, of course, use and consume, I think we're on the way. We see a lot of uh, open control is used in many, many operators. ONAP, for instance, Bell Canada, in ONAP it's the de facto standard for orchestration. And, and I think operators are understanding more and more that, and it's a good thing for, for them and for, uh, for the vendors, for the SI, that open source is open, but not necessarily free. There's a lot of service that you will need to consume in order to make open source run. So I think in, in the last eight months or, or 12 months, there was a, a, a misunderstanding. There was completely misaligned expectation. And now that people are, are, are understanding it, they say, okay, it's not free. There's no free, free gift. We'll have to eventually pay for this. But now let's think about vendor lock-in. It's a totally different with the vector vendor lock-in. So explain what you mean by vendor lock-in. So here's the thing, you're an operator and you, can, you, you may choose a vendor solution, a non-open source solution, and then there's a vendor running in your lab and in your, in your environment. If you want to replace him, that's a very complex if you have hundreds of sites uh, with deployed with the vendor solution. If you're using open source, so yes, you will need to eventually hire an IT shop or a SI or a vendor and pay money to that vendor because, because of the service. But at every point in time, there's going to be two or three other vendors behind that person standing in line to get your budget. So you know that as long as that vendor, as long as everybody is honest and that vendor is doing his job right, uh, uh, you're fine. But you're empowered at every point in time to say, hey, mister, the recent two quarters were not that good. Maybe next year, I'm going to choose the other guy. And then you are in, in control of your destiny. Yeah, thank you very much indeed for joining us at Token TV. Thank you.